So thank you, Sarah, for giving me the opportunity um, to talk here at this Beds and Discovery Catapult um, Connect web webinar about the HIV identification and why understanding your target is key. So just a little bit about um, Domain X for those who doesn't, don't know. We're a contract research organisation based um, within the sort of southwest of Cambridge, a bioscientist hub there. We're around about 50 to 60 scientists and we've got just over 2,000 uh, square metres of lab space. And it's an ordinary facility, so we've got chemistry and biology under one roof. Our clients are widely spread between uh, big pharma, agrochemical, um, small, medium and large biotech, startups, virtual companies, um, as well as major academic institutes. And over the years, we've developed compounds that got into uh, clinical candidates, uh, preclinical development, when cited as inventors on a number of different patterns, and obviously author, authors on um, lots of different peer reviewed papers. And we are a dedicated CRO, uh, we've got no research in internal research projects, and critically, um, all of our staff are on one site. And that's key to this talk is that we, um, we work incredibly closely together. As I said, we've got a comprehensive medicines research platform. So that means we've got chemistry, protein science, and assay biology all together on one, on one site. And we cover all aspects as you'd expect of these decision divisions. So we've got um, computer-aided drug design, medicinal chemistry, analytical chemistry, protein expression, combinatorial domain hunting, which is particularly useful for um, proteins that are difficult to express, X-ray crystallography, and then within assay biology, you've got um, cell biology, which means we can, um, we can develop um, bespoke phenotypic assays, biophysics, as well as biochemistry. And the teams work really, really closely together, um, and this is exemplified at how we go about the HIT identification at Domain X. Each group isn't just siloed in its own, uh, own area, so the assay biologists don't go off on their own and design a HIT cascade for this target. Targets at the centre of the project, and then we're surrounded by the experts from each team. So that's chemistry, protein, that's their biology, all focus on the targets and the target profile to put a plan in place that not only just identifies a hit that's got the best chance of um, acting on that drug, but they've got the best chance of turning the hit into a translating that into a drug that's going to go into the clinic. For example, proteins that have um, different domains and different regions. Chemistry can work out whether or not these different domains or regions are druggable, which are more druggable than the others. Two different regions in first selectivity versus other family members. And obviously this will feed into protein sciences. Do we want to produce full length protein? Do we want to produce truncated protein? And again, this will feed into the assay biology. Can we identify where, um, where the hits are binding? And do specific regions of the proteins have different downstream effects? And are we able to de design a screening cascade um, where these different effects can be measured? And I said, all of this is focused on identifying a hit that's got the right chemical properties, not just to act as a tool drug, um, but to become a drug getting in towards the clinic. In terms of compound libraries, um, at Domain X that we've got a virtual screening platform, so that's Lead Builder and a fragment screening platform, all of which can feed into a successful medicinal chemistry program. And successful projects need good quality starting points. Um, to generate those, you need good quality compounds and good quality um, hit matter. You don't want to run screens with large numbers of artifacts or large numbers of compounds that make poor chemical starting points. Because doing this means that the compounds that are good can get lost in the noise. So in terms of our virtual screening platform, um, obviously this can utilize structural information or homology modeling. And we tend to screen up to about a thousand compounds in this. And on the bottom left, you can see kind of a, a visual representation of, of some of the virtual libraries we've got. And we've got a CATS library, which are all the commercially available compounds. This isn't just a virtual library that doesn't actually exist in, in reality. This is a library that genuinely does exist that means that we can purchase from them and that enables um, rapid hit expansion. We've also got a highly, um, highly curated um, chemical library called the NICE, NICE Library, which is a number of interesting chemical entities. As I said, this is a highly curated library. It's QC'd about once a quarter. And this is our lead-like library. So 
we've got in-house internal filters and this filters out all frequent hitters, reactive motifs, pains, and delivers Lipinski-like lead compounds. The fragment set, as you'd imagine, it's again, it's a very highly curated fragment library, diverse library, about 1,300 fragments. These are all Rule of Three compliant and they contain a large number of 3D fragments as well as 2D fragments. We've confirmed all of their solubility experimentally at one millimolar, so we know their soluble concentration ranges that will be screened. And again, these are regularly QC'd and delivered and nitrogen, stored in nitrogen pods. And the idea of all of this is that the hits that come out of the screens are good quality compounds that are good chemical starting points. And again, it's not just about identifying a hit, but increasing the chance of actual success of the project and delivering it through into, into, a, into a drug. In terms of, of protein production, the key really is to focus on the target product profile that you want. Where do you want your compounds to bind? If you're agnostic about that, it might be better to produce full length protein. However, it's important to produce the right and relevant protein, not just simply um, protein production that gives you the biggest yield. Critical to good quality protein production is a high quality is QC protein. So just a single band on an agarose gel doesn't necessarily mean you've got a homogeneous protein. It's important to take it through multiple step chromatography. For example, separating phosphorylation variants by ion exchange chromatography. And again, here at Domain Next, if there's ligands available, we'll regularly QC our protein by, um, by thermal shift to DSF assays. Finally, in terms of the screening assay, this again, it's critically important to, um, to have good quality screening assays. And it's important to be able to um, assess the target in line, assess. It's important that the screening assay you choose is in line with your target. So the technology that we use at Domainex regularly is microscope thermophoresis. And this is a technology that I've been appreciative of um, for years beforehand, before joining the, joining the organization. And it's got a number of advantages that we feel um, above other, other biophysical methods. So it uses very, very low protein samples. So typically about five to 50 nanomolar concentration in about five microliters. This means that you can focus on the right protein. So even if your prep um, produces relatively low yield, but it's in the right confirmation, this is something you can use. So you're not having to, um, to move into a preparation that just produces bulk protein if it's not the right, if it's not the right form of protein. It's also a solution-based system, and this means that this target can be delivered in the appropriate way, not just in the way that makes the method work. We also that it can also use multiple different labeling strategies, and often here these are directed by the structural information that we can gather um, gather about the target. And this means that we're able to again we're able to deliver the protein in its, in its near physiological state, which gives us the opportunity to be able to identify hits in a method that means it will translate more likely translate into a drug at the end of the, at the, end of the project. At Domain X, we've got the supporting capabilities. So that means that we have um, SPR, ITC, NMR, and DSF, which obviously gives us the opportunity to put the, um, put the library, put the hits through, through a cascade. So what I'd finally like to do is end by um, having a few slides just on a, on a, um, on a case study. And this is uh, G9A, which is a mythene and lysine methyl transferase which is involved in um, epigenetic regulation by covalent modification of histones. And this was a target that we uh, wanted for a, um, we wanted for as, a, as, a, as an oncology target. So the only available assays for GLINA were alpha screens, um, and these were suitable for high concentration fragment screening. What we also wanted to do was target the peptide binding site to gain specificity over the sound binding domain. And what we wanted to be able to do was this, this we felt would be able to infer specificity over other, other um, lysine methyl transfer raises. What this meant was that we ended up with a complicated bar physics system because it was a three component system. And here with this project, we ran both virtual screen as well as fragment screen in parallel. And this, this, is, another this is a way of screening that we find particularly beneficial. Here's the primary hit data. And this is just an example of how the, how the hits come out of the monolith system, the MST system. 
And it also highlights another advantage that we find from the system in that actually because of the way it runs, you get um, false, false positive detection occurring straight away. So on the top right hand side, you can see an example of um, protein aggregation due to the compound. And then below you've got um, ligand produced photo bleaching and then also fluorescent. And what this means is that when you get data out of the monolith, you can then focus on the um, good quality kits that come out and actually ignore it and discount some of the compounds that are coming out from the noise. Going on from this project, we were able to um, identify high quality binding hits with really good ligand deficiency. These compounds were all um, were confirmed by um, NMR, um, STD NMR, and a number of those demonstrated positive binding. And you can see on the right that we were able to identify, generate a number of X-ray crystal structures for these compounds. This led a successful med medicinal chemistry program, including these compounds in gen and was keeping the um, ligand deficiency incredibly high. So in summary, um, integrated drug discovery approach, it's essential for hit ID. So having really good contacts and good communication between the chemistry teams, um, protein production, as well as assay biology. The most important thing is that you're not really just identifying a hit compound, but you're identifying the starting point for the drug. So the quality of the hit compound matters, matters highly. The better the compound is done, the more translatable it is, it means you can more likely to have um, success through your lead optimization programs and into delivery and into delivering a, 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 a drug for the drug candidate. And it relies on appropriate protein delivery, high quality compound files, as well as a, a sensitive um, screening assay that's, that's essential for, for, the, for, the, um, for the library that you're trying to screen. And here's a final summary slide, which just highlights the, um, the services that DomainX offers. So, it's an integrated drug discovery service, and we've got a really good track record not only of delivering high quality hit matter, but high quality hit matter that delivers into preclinical candidates and on the to the clinic. I will now go through the QA sections and I'll see whether or not we have any questions that I can answer. What are the biggest difficulties in compiling and maintaining the compound and fragment libraries? So for us, I think what we've done is, is the, the, the physical library enables us to, because it's not enormous, it enables us to maintain it very, very well. Um, it means that we're able to curate it, curate it highly. I think in terms of the difficulties, it would simply be in terms of scale um, and having a, a, a large, the bigger the library, the more difficult it is to curate. And the first question, so what experience do all proteins work using MST as an assay platform? What percentage of success rate? So DomainX specifically brought in the MST, I think about six years ago. So it was, um, we were very, very early adopters, and at the moment, I don't believe we've had any failure to develop an assay, a sensitive assay for MST. Um, we go through quite a thorough assay dev program for our MST. So, for example, we're going to buffer screen through it, um, which is particularly useful. And the biggest problem with most of them is, is needing a needing a good quality tool compound. Um, and I think that's that's what's always the challenge is when you have um, projects that come in where you don't necessarily have good quality tools or any tools whatsoever, that becomes more challenging. Um, but so far, we, we've managed to develop assays and hits for, if not all, very nearly every single MST assay that's, that's come in. 